from Eurovision and Mondovision. This is the live broadcast of Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion, presided over by the Holy Father, Pope Francis here in the Vatican's St. Peter's Basilica. On Calvary, two ways of thinking collided. In the Gospel, the words of the crucified Jesus are in sharp contrast with the words of those crucified with him. The latter keeps saying, save yourself. The leaders of the people said, let him save himself if he is the Christ of God. His chosen one. The soldiers say the same thing. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Finally, one of the criminals, echoing their words, said to him, are you not the Christ? Save yourself. Save yourself. Take care of yourself. Think of yourself, not others, but only your own well-being, your own success, your own interests, your possessions, your power, your image. Save yourself. This is the constant refrain of the world that crucify the Lord. Let us think about it. Against this self-centered mindset is God's way of thinking. The mantra, save yourself, collides with the words of the Savior who offers himself. Like his adversaries, Jesus speaks three times in today's gospel. Yet, he did not claim anything for himself. Indeed, he did not even defend or justify himself. He prayed to the Father and offered mercy to the good thief. One of his words in particular marked the difference with regard to the mantra, mantra, save yourself. He said, Father, forgive them. Let us reflect on the words. When the Lord says to them, at a very specific moment, while he is being crucified, as he felt the nails, piercing his wrists and feet. Let us imagine the, cru the excruciating pain he suffered at that moment amid the most searing physical pain of his passion. Jesus asked forgiveness for those who were piercing him. At that time, we would be screaming out and giving vent to all our anger and suffering. But Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Unlike the other martyrs about whom the Bible speaks of, Jesus does not rebuke his executors or threaten punishment in the name of God. Rather, he prayed for the evildoers. Fastened to the pall of humiliation, his attitude is giving, becoming forgiving. Brothers and sisters, God does the same thing with us. When we cause suffering by our actions, God suffers, yet has only one desire, only one desire, forgive us. In order to appreciate this, let us gaze upon the crucified Lord. It is from his painful wounds, from the streams of blood caused by the nails of our sinfulness that forgiveness gushes forth. Let us look at Jesus on the cross and realize that greater words were never spoken. Father, forgive them. Let us look to Jesus on the cross and realize that we have never been looked upon with a more gentle and compassionate gaze. Let us look to Jesus on the cross and understand that we have never received a more loving embrace. Let us look to the crucified Lord and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. You love me and you always forgive me, even at those moments when I find it hard to love and forgive myself. There, as he was being crucified at the height of his pain, Jesus himself obeyed the most demanding of his commandments that we love our enemies. Let us think about someone who in our lives injured, offended, 
disappointing us, someone who made us angry, who did not understand us, or who did not set a, who set a, or who set a bad example. How often we spend time looking back at those who have wronged us. How often we think back and lick the wounds that other people have inflicted upon us. Life itself and history have inflicted on us. Today, Jesus teaches us not to remain there, but to react. To break the vicious cycle of evil and sorrow. To react to the nails in our lives with love, to the buffets of hatred, with the embrace of forgiveness. As disciples of Jesus, do we love the Master, or do we love our desire to strike back? It's a question that we must ask ourselves. Do we follow Jesus, or we follow our own instincts? If we want to test whether we truly belong to Christ, let us look at how we behave towards those who have hurt us. The Lord asks us to respond not as we feel or as everyone else does, but in the way he does towards us. He asks us to break out the mindset that says, I'll love you if you love me. I'll be your friend if you are my friend. I'll help you if you help me. No. Rather, we are to show compassion and mercy to everyone. For everyone, God sees everyone as a son or a daughter in each person. He does not separate us in good and bad friends and enemies. We are the ones who do this, and we make God suffer. For him, we are all of us his beloved children, children whom he desires to embrace and forgive. That invitation given at the, in the parable of the wedding, when he, the owner of the feast sent people and said, bring them all to the feast of the wedding, black, white, everyone, no one is privileged. Let them all come. The only privilege is that we are all loved and forgiven. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. According to the gospel, Jesus kept saying this. He did not say it once for all, but he was, when he was being nailed to the cross, instead he spent all his time on the cross with the same words on his lips and in his heart. God never tires of forgiving. We should always understand this and understand with our hearts, God never gets tired of forgiving us. We are the ones that get tired of asking for his forgiveness. He never gets tired of forgiving us. He does not put up with us for a while and then changes his mind as we are tempted to do. Jesus, so the Gospel of Luke teaches us, came into the world to bring us forgiveness for our sins. In the end, he gave us a clear command to proclaim forgiveness of sins to everyone in his name. Brothers and sisters, let us never grow tired of proclaiming God's forgiveness. We priests of administering it, all Christians of receiving it and bearing witness to it. Let us never be tired of God's pardon. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Let us observe one thing. Jesus not only asked that they be forgiven, but he also mentioned the reason why, for they know not what they do. How could that be? Did those who crucified him had premeditated his killing, organized his arrests and trials, and now they were standing on Calvary to witness his death. Yet Jesus Christ justifies those violent men by saying they know not what they do. That is how Jesus acts in our regard. He makes himself our advocate. He does not set himself against us, but for us and against our sins. His words make us think, for they do not know. That 
ignorance of the heart that we all have as sinners. When we resort to violence, we show that we no longer know anything about God, who is our father, or even about others who are brothers and sisters. We lose sight of why we are in the world and even end up committing senseless acts of cruelty. We see today in this folly of war where Christ is crucified yet another time. Christ is once more nailed to the cross in mothers who mourn the unjust death of husbands and sons. He is crucified in refugees who flee from bombs with children in their arms. He is crucified in the elderly left alone to die, in young people deprived of a future, in soldiers went to kill their brothers and sisters. Christ is crucified there today. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Many people heard these extraordinary words, but only one person responded to them. He was a criminal, crucified next to Jesus. We can imagine the mercy of Christ, what steered up in him, one last hope, and led him to speak those words. Jesus, remember me. As if to say, everyone else has forgotten about me, yet you keep thinking of those who crucify you. With you then, there is also a place for me. The good thief accept God, accepted God in his life as it was ending. And this way, his life began anew. In the hell of the world, he saw heaven opening up. Today, you will be with me in paradise. This is the marvel of God's forgiveness, which turned the last request of a man condemned to death into the first canonization in history. Brothers and sisters, in the course of this week, let us cling to the certainty that God can forgive every sin, everything, bridges every distance, and turns all mourning into dancing. The certainty that with Jesus there is always a place for everyone, that with Jesus things are never over, that with him it is never too late. With God, we can always come back to life. We can always come back with God to live. Take courage. Let us journey towards Easter with his forgiveness. For Christ constantly intercedes for us before the Father. He intercedes for us before the Father. Gazing upon our violent and tormented world, Jesus never gets tired of repeating. Let us in silence repeat with Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. very powerful reflection there.